All right, everybody, welcome back to Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. Today we're drinking coffee once again. I know, I'm sorry. It's uh, 8 47 in the morning. And uh, we're building this desk. All right, so this is a six foot walnut desk um, from Lumber, sourced from a local hardwood dealer uh, here in central Indiana. And um, I built it in order for my wife and I to have a place to, uh, she's working from home, so she has one side of it, and then I have the other side of it uh, for my computer and YouTube and work and all these other things that we do. We needed something that was big enough to accommodate both of our computers and have enough space for, um, you know, calendars and other, you know, organizational things and whatnot. So before we get started, this is, I just make the top here. It's just three pieces of three quarter inch walnut that are glued together and then flattened. And then we just used hairpin legs underneath. And the reason we did that is because of time. So we really needed a desk. The one she had was not working out for. It was too small and it was kind of falling apart. So um, eventually I'm gonna go back and add a base to this and uh, hopefully like a cabinet uh, on one side or something or maybe some drawers. That's probably gonna be around the time that she goes back to work or goes back into the office. Um, so this can be kind of out of commission for a few days and it's not gonna like impede uh, her you know, workflow or anything like that. Um, another thing that I'm gonna add, I wanted to do now, I just, I don't wanna mess it up. Um, and like I said, like I said, we're, this is like time sensitive that I need to get this thing done. Um, is like a little coaster made out of acrylic and um, LEDs. So whatever beer we're drinking, whenever we get back to drinking beer for these videos, will be like kind of illuminated from the underneath. Um, that is not my original idea. I saw it on the uh, How to Drink YouTube channel. The guy's really funny. Uh, but he has kind of a similar setup where he's got a big um, desk in front of him and he has like this little inset LED coaster type thing. It's, it's really cool. So I'm going to copy him over there. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of the end goal for this. But like I said, we had to just get it done and then get it functional. So these, these little hairpin legs, which I'll show you in a minute, are I think they're about 50 bucks from Rockler. And so all you have to do is make the top and then just screw them onto the bottom and then bingo, bingo, you get a desk. Bingo, bingo. Um, all right, so let's get into let's get into the build. So I bought three boards that were over six feet. I knew I wanted it to be around six feet, but since this is for us, it didn't really have to fit a space specifically or anything like that. So um, now I'm I'm just laying them out, seeing like how long how long the shortest piece is basically, so I know how much to trim off the other pieces. Um, and I was shooting for a little over six feet here because uh, I know during the glue up there's probably going to slide around and um, I don't want to, I want to be able to like trim them, like trim them up at the end so they're, it's a really nice um, edge, I don't know, end. I think I was shooting for like six feet and one inch, maybe six, six feet, two inches. I'm also trying to avoid um, as many knots as possible, just so they don't, you know, get in the way of the desk. I, which ordinarily I would fill those with epoxy, or I've been touring with buying one of those like knot fillers. I'm sure you've seen them on Instagram and other places. Um, it's like that. It's like it's like a little hot glue gun, but it's like black glue, and then you take this like compress thing, like push it down, and then just scrape it up. But they're pretty expensive, so I was like, eh, maybe not for this project, just for us. So I'm not doing that. Okay, so now I took took a bit of time to lay out the grain in the way that I thought was like the most appealing, but I ended up making a huge mistake here, and um, I didn't. I got really like front sight focused on one area, and I kept moving these around, looking at them, and all this other stuff, and like trying to figure out how to make that specific spot look good, and I completely neglected the rest of it. So I ended up putting. Um, which I think is probably the prettiest piece, which is in the, is the center piece. And it really shouldn't be there because it has the most sap wood, which is like this lighter color wood. Um, so it probably should have been on the ends or, or like, you know, one of the ends somewhere. Um, but basically the, my tip here is, once again, don't do what I did. Uh, take your time, stop, like lay it out, and then like step back and look at the whole thing. Don't just worry about one area. 
um, and neglect the rest of the table because now every time that I look at it, I see the, the, the like the seam, which it would have been really easy to hide. I just made a mistake, and um, the uh, you'll see you can kind of see it in this section right here, but it becomes really prevalent once I start uh, finishing it, and it really pops like the darker wood comes out. Um, and the place that I was focused on, you'll see in a second, I ended up just cutting off anyway. I was concerned I wasn't going to get a good joint because of that right there. There is a big like, um, I don't know, it's like rotted wood right there. So I decided just to cut it off and that's what I was so worried about, not being able to move that piece of wood or not being able to like join to that. So I wanted it on an edge so I could, you know, do whatever I was going to, I don't even know, do, take care of the chamfer bit or leave it, I didn't know. Then I ended up cutting it off and I didn't have to worry about it. So got, got, got focused and forgot about the rest of it. So. I will not do that again. Alright, the glue up. This was an actually pretty stress free glue up even though I did make mistakes like usual. Um, it's only three pieces. I totally understand why people use dominoes and um, you know, a domino joiner or dowels or biscuits or whatever just for alignment. Uh, I ended up putting calls on one side, um, not on the other, just out of laziness. I thought it would be alright and it slipped more than I thought it was going to. And I had about an eighth of an inch slip, um, so it's like these are the boards. One of them was about an eighth of an inch higher than the other board in two sections. Um, in two sections of this thing. So that became a problem once I got it out of clamps, just because I had a lot more work to do. I ended up having to use a belt sander, which we'll get to. Um, had a lot more work I had to do. So the, the tip here, I guess, is... The more, the more time you take in the glue up getting everything as flat as possible, um, like get a long straight edge and like test it all the way down in between the clamps, the less time you're going to have to spend like cleaning it up. Um, and then in my case, because I don't really have the tools um, to do that efficiently, I ended up using a belt sander and that caused its own issues, uh, which like permanently like damaged the piece, which uh, we'll talk about when we get to the belt sander. Okay, so this is where I started dressing that like eighth of an inch um, like slippage. Um, and I thought maybe I could just use my random orbit sander with um, 80 grit in it, but that was taking way too, I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. I had flattened some stuff with a belt sander before with like, I think it's like 36 grit and then 80 grit, you know, like kind of going through the grits or whatever. And it had left some pretty deep um, like grooves and gouges in the wood itself and I was thinking and that was pine so I was like a redwood I think um, so I was like maybe it won't damage it as bad because it's a hardwood um, I was wrong the really deep uh, gouges in there which I ended up being able to take out most of them uh, just by running them through the grits but it was incredibly time-consuming um, and like I said they're not completely gone you can definitely see them and that is not like that's not what you want if you're building furniture you know you want it to be a smooth finish the only reason I didn't care so much is because this is for us. I actually don't mind it. I think it makes it look kind of like it's, you know, rustic or beat up or, you know, whatever, whatever excuse I can find that makes it seem like it, it's, it was intentional. Um, but I, I was really, like I said, this was a time sensitive project. I needed to get this thing done and I wasn't going to sit there for, you know, four or five hours just sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. So needed to get it done. All right. So now we're going to uh, trim this thing to final length. And this is where it'd be really handy to have a track saw, um, just because they're, it's easier to like line up and uh, ensure you have an accurate 90 degree cut. But you can do it with a circular saw and a fence, like I am right now. But basically, I'm just I'm just using the the saw itself as a guide to get the fence lined up, ensuring that it's 90 degrees, and then on both sides, clamping it down, and then um, using the saw. To, uh, to flush off the end so it's like a really nice crisp look. Um, one issue I did run into here was this circular saw is, it's a great saw but I haven't replaced the blade in like three years 
So I end up getting, I don't use it very often, so it ends up just sitting there collecting dust. Um, this is really the only application I use it in this or when I'm breaking down large sheets of plywood. So, um, I don't even know what I was saying. Oh yeah, uh, so this, the blade is old, I need to replace it, and I ended up getting a little bit of like chip out. Um, you'll see that, you can kind of see it in one of the shots later, the close up of me flush trimming this side. Uh, not flush trimming, but whatever, trimming it. I got a little bit of chip out, which isn't the end of the world. Um, I easily could have taken off, you know, put a new blade in it, and then just um, take off another sixteenth of an inch even, or eighth of an inch. Uh, in order to clean that up and it wouldn't have affected the overall length of the piece by too much. This is the shot where you can kind of see the uh, the tear out at the end. But that's easily fixed with a with a like I said, with a sharper blade. New blade. Take care of your tools. Don't be like me. If you don't have a track saw, this is a really good option. That's just a piece of scrap that I knew was straight, so um, it'll get you where you need to go. I eventually will be buying a track saw because I want to. I want to start making bigger stuff, and this, the amount of time you lose setting up this fence and ensuring that it's at like you know 90 degrees in the right area and stuff like that is um, it's worth it to just for me anyway to buy the track saw. Alright, so I wanted to add a, um, a chamfer to the bottom of this. Chamfer, chamfer? I don't know, whatever. Let me know, chamfer or chamfer? Chamfer, shampoo? To the underside of this, just to give it a little bit of like profile, um, a little bit of a reveal. Uh, so, my big router, which is what I would normally use, like the two-handed beast router, uh, is broken because once again, I don't take care of my tools. So I ended up having to use a trim router, which isn't the end of the, it is not a big deal. Um, it's a really good tool for this, there's no cord, but I should have, I knew I was gonna have to do it in multiple passes, right? It, because if you do one, it's just gonna jam it and kill your battery. But I should have gone in like five or six shallow passes. I ended up doing it like two or three passes, um, which I burned through three batteries in like two minutes. And um, I ended up getting kind of uneven results in a couple places just because the um, I was getting like chip out and tear out from this too. So word of the wise, just take your time. Don't be in a hurry like I was. Uh, just um, just go a little bit at a time. Take them off. Take it off. Take it off. Go all the way around. And re really, the big thing was I, was I was being lazy. I didn't want to. I could only hit two sides at a time because this, because of the way my assembly table is set up. But I didn't want to have to keep moving it around. So I was like, oh, I'll just take care of it this way, set it and do it again. Um, which obviously is the wrong thing to do. Take your time and you'll have a, a better finished product in the end. It wasn't exactly like a perfect chamfer along, along the edge just because I did get some tear out. Uh, I was able to clean it up a little bit with sanding later, but um, I wish I had just done like, you know, eighth of an inch, or not even eighth of an inch, like sixteenth of an inch passes at a time. Uh, I wouldn't have had to change battery so much and it would have been a cleaner result. Taking some pictures for the gram. Nobody liked that picture. So, yep. Onto the third battery to finish off the last edge. So I could have I could have done the long edges on the table saw, which I I don't know why I didn't. To be honest, I think I had it set up. I could I should have just taken the the um, trim router, hit the the ends um, because those would be too difficult to pass through the table saw um, without some kind of like sled to assist me, which I didn't have and I didn't want to build. So, but the, the long grain would have been really, the long edges would have been really easy. Uh, just cant your blade over to 45 degrees and then just run it through, uh, just ensuring that it's the right amount of um, like chamfer or whatever, which would have produced a much cleaner result and it wouldn't have um, burned through batteries often or as fast as the um, trim router. So, I don't know why I didn't do that, honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. Uh, now I'm just hand sanding everything to kind of ease the edges. Everything right now is like pretty sharp. This little sanding block pad thing is amazing. I use it on every, literally literally every project. It's like a little hook and loop Velcro type deal that you can just put the regular sanding discs into. Uh, it like folds around and then uh, it's like kind of squishy, I guess, and uh, just helps break all the edges. And I think that's uh, 220, I'm pretty sure. Maybe 320, I don't remember what I had in there. You can also see that there's some knots. Uh, one of them's like right here. 
uh, I wasn't super worried about it. They're not, they're gonna be on the, they're on this side, oh, the other one's right here. So, these two knots. I didn't fill them, they're not that big. I'm not super worried about it, and like I said, this is going in my house, so if anything happens to them, I can take care of it. If this was a, if this was for a client or something, I definitely would have um, filled them with epoxy or that little knot filler stuff. Okay, so I got Walrus Oil, which I've used their stuff before, and it's really, really good. But I bought the wrong stuff. I bought, actually, I don't even know if it's the wrong stuff. I bought the stuff I, I didn't want to buy the wax, right, which is what I bought. I bought furniture wax, and I meant to buy furniture butter. Um, it was also 10 degrees when this was delivered to me, so it was pretty much frozen solid. So you can see right there, I have a heat gun um, that's like melt it, helping melt it a little bit to get it in there because it, I was literally sitting there um, trying to get it out of the can to get onto the rag, and it just was not, it wasn't even coming out. So I ended up melting it a little bit. Uh, it worked, it worked great. It's beautiful. It's a great finish. Um, but I, I think I was, I think I meant to buy. Or I, I know I wanted to buy the furniture butter, which I guess is, um, it's not, it's not as waxy as the wax, which makes sense. Um, and then, from what I understand, the wax is kind of like to help, like keep, keep up. It's, it's not for like an initial coat, um, or maybe it is. I don't know. I, I have no idea what I'm doing with finishing. So don't listen to me with finishing. I use the wax. It looks good. I, I mean, I think it looks great. I don't know how. Um, if I did it wrong or right or whatever, just if you guys are familiar with the furniture, uh, Walrus Oil kind of like wax, butter, cutting board oil, all their stuff, um, let me know down in the comments because I'm just I'm just rolling with it. I have, I have no idea. So looks good. Whatever. All right. So <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. So like I said, this was a time sensitive project, right? So I we went to Rockler to buy the legs and they didn't have them. Well. They did have them, but I'm dumb. They didn't have what I, they, I didn't think that they had the ones that I wanted. Um, so we went home, I bought these online, and I realized I wanted the 28 inch legs. And the way they have their website set up is it's like these, it's like U shaped legs or whatever. And then it has the varying styles and uh, like lengths on their heights, whatever it is. And they're all like in sequential order. Well, I found these like black U shaped ones, which is what we wanted. Um, and for some reason I thought they said 28. I, I'm, I'm terrible at buying things apparently online. But they are 38 inch legs, uh, which is basically like a bar top. So we got these delivered to us um, a couple days later, which is funny because I ended up bringing this upstairs and setting, up, setting it on uh, like fold out dining trays so my wife had a desk to sit at. <laughs> which wasn't the most stable thing in the world, but it worked. So when we got these in, I didn't realize, I was like, oh, this is a big box, but I thought maybe it was just like the packaging. It wasn't the packaging. There's like no foam or anything in there. So you can see here, I'm pulling them out and right there, I'm realizing my mistake. Oh my God, dang it. Now I'm running through scenarios in my head. What do we do? Because these took, a, these took like, I don't know, five or six days to get delivered. For some reason I pulled out the other one just to make sure they're the same height, I guess. Maybe the height I wanted was in there. It wasn't. Then I call my wife up. <laughs> she, she immediately realizes what's going on. And then, so we decide to return them. Return them. Now we're just talking through like what we want to do, um, and I ended up calling Rockler, telling him what I wanted, and they said we do have a pair or a set of um, a pair, a set of the hairpin legs in 28 inches, which is desk height. So we ended up taking those back to Rockler. I think the next day, returning them there, which uh, was easy, a super easy process. Buying the other legs, which it was a those legs that I had to return were I think two hundred and fifty dollars, and the ones we ended up going with were like fifty bucks. So it was actually a it was a uh, a blessing in disguise, I guess. But uh, we ended up getting these hairpin legs, which you'll see. I'm gonna do like the glamour shot thing here in a second.
Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful desk. Like I said, this is it's kind of just the first step of it. We're gonna do a sub assembly for the base um, and then get some like fancy. I've never built anything like a desk before and I want to take my time and um, uh, make it, you know, like a piece of furniture instead of just like a regular, you know, something that looks like crap. So in the interim, these legs will do, will do fine and maybe we'll relocate them to like a coffee table or something. Not a coffee table because they're 28 inches, but maybe an a entryway table or something like that for downstairs after we're done, after I make the base. And then that little coaster. Okay, I think, and that, I mean that's the whole, that's the whole thing. So, like I said, this is a, this is a really easy project. Uh, I think the wood cost me, there's 60 bucks a board, so it was like $180 for the, the top, which that's not too bad for a walnut. That's, the prices are gonna vary based on where you live, like your area and stuff. Um, and I definitely go to a hardwood dealer, not, don't go, don't try to find this at like, um, you know, Home Depot or anything like that. They have Poplar and some other things, but you're gonna pay a lot of money and they probably won't even have a walnut there. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, channel, channel update, that's, um, doing really well. I'm, I'm really trying to stick to this um, like every week video. I don't know if we're gonna get one out. Like, I mean, this is gonna be in hindsight because this will obviously be out because you will be watching it. But as this is being filmed, we're getting like a winter storm. We got 12 inches of snow like two days ago and uh, we're getting another, I don't know, we got like four or five inches last night and it's still snowing so it's kind of difficult to like go anywhere or go into the shop. It's freezing, so it's kind of the weather is kind of put a kink in operations. For now, this is this is being recorded at the same time as like Texas is complete has been out of power for like three or four days. Whatever. That's that's when this is being recorded. We're not in Texas, but for reference. Um, but yeah, I, I can't even open our garage door because of all the snow. Like I could go out there and shovel it, but I don't want to do that. What else? Oh yeah, nobody let me know, nobody uh, said anything in the comments about the laser time lapse videos. If you guys want those, I'm, that, I'm taking that as like, you guys don't care if I put them out or not. So uh, if we don't do those, then it'll probably be every two weeks, like I said, for a build video. Okay, I think that's it, coffee review. This is very fancy brand, uh, Kroger, like regular Aziz coffee, just like last time. And I like it, just like last time.